okay hello and welcome back so we have discussed redux so far in this project so in the last tutorials of coding we have completed our reducers and now we need to combine all of those reducers inside one file as we discussed inside our redux tutorial i have given you whole analogy about what is redux and then now i'm going to combine all of those reducers inside one file so close this and click on reducer and type index.js and you should know that we are using webpack and webpack is a good dependency manager every time when we take a name of reducer webpack always see index.js and later on i will be updating this project this overall course by adding tutorials on different concepts used in this project like i have added the redux tutorial and i will be adding the webpack tutorial as well and then saga tutorial and other terminologies that we have used but for now let's complete this project first so i'm going to import each and every reducer inside this file type import first of all app reducer from app reducer so i'm going to fast forward remember i have added this app reducer so i'm going to fast forward this So I have imported all of those reducers inside this file. So take a time and pause the video and you can import as well. So now I'm going to create an object called root reducer and it will take all of those above reducers. First of all products. I'm going to call it as products and I'm going to add a the product reducer in here. Okay. So I'm going to add it in here product reducer and then I'm going to add basket reducer inside it and it will take basket reducer and then I will take auth and inside it I'm going to pass auth reducer and like so profile profile reducer filter filter reducer okay users user reducer and check out check out reducer and the last one is app which is going to be your app reducer and I'm going to correct my spelling of profile. Okay. Okay. Our object is completed. Now export your object and give it root reducer. Okay. So every time when I'm going to call the reducer, I'm going to call this, redu this root reducer with the items. For example, if I want to call for basket, then basket reducer will be called from here. So save this file. So there is a little bit change in the project. Okay. So you can go to the video on YouTube and go to the description section in this video and go to my GitHub repo and go inside some important files. And inside this, I have added this constant folder in here. Okay, open this. And inside it, you will see constants and routes. If I open routes, and I have added constants inside it, and you can remember easily home. If I type home, then it will take to this route. 
account will be taken to this route. So if I go to my project inside routers, okay, and if I open any router, if I open app router in here, then you can see the path is specified for search is forward slash and search. For home, we have added the forward slash. And for sign up, forward slash sign up. This is the route. Okay. So there is one more way of adding these routes. Okay. Our application is getting bigger. So every time when we want to add a route, so we have to write it as inside these quotations. And one more way is to add another file and add every route inside your application. Okay. And if I go back inside a constant folder, and if I go inside constants, then you can see the get products, get product success, everything is added inside here. So if I go back in here and if I go back to my actions, if I open app action, then the type is loading. Okay. So if I go in here, then we can see the loading inside here. Okay, if we go in here, then you can see the loading is equal to this, and this is also equals to this type. So click on source and create new folder and name it constants. Okay, and inside constants, add new file and name it constants.js. Okay, and by the way, name it constants okay and again inside constants folder create a new file and name it routes.js now we have two files inside constants folder constants.js and rename it with constants okay and routes.js and inside constants.js Go to repo and copy all of those constants. Okay. And paste inside your constants folder. Okay. Everything is copied. Save this file and open your routes.js. Go back and go to constants and go to routes. and copy all of those routes and go in here and paste it and save it okay so we have all routes present in here so instead of using this one we can use this constant name admin users and it means we are trying to tell that this is the path so if i go in app actions and if I go above port, okay, and you have to import it with this bracket because we are not exporting with default, okay. We are exporting normally, then that's why we have to pass these brackets and then import loading, okay, this loading in here, okay, from constants and then inside constant okay type in if you go in here inside constant folders import this constant so we are using webpack again so that's why we are not giving it any direct path like this so webpack is very handy so by type by typing direct this loading like in here we are typing this one we can type this loading okay direct so same in the case of auth actions okay we do not need to write sign in as type sign in with google we have already taken inside in here Okay, 
sign in success, sign in, sign up. And if you go in here, or we go in auth actions, okay. So in here, if we type import steric as type from constants and constants okay so we have imported each and everything by typing steric and we can use it by using type okay so in here we can write type dot sign in with google okay so it's mean if we go in here and we are accessing this file with type okay and inside it we have used this sign in with google it means we are trying to tell it that you have to take this sign in with google okay because this is equals to this but in the previous videos we have used the previous style okay sign in with google so you do not need to add each and everything again from this file okay the reason why i'm telling you next time if you want to develop the project then you can add these files from here in order to save you any time by typing this one in each file okay but why I am adding it now the question is because in my developed project I have added this constants we go inside sagas in auth saga I have given you this file and I will be explaining this file after some videos but if you go in here then you can see I have included this constants sign in sign up on auth state fail and everything if you're following this project then you can understand that what all of these are if you go in root saga have each and everything is present okay that import static as action from constant and constants and action dot sign in action dot sign up and these are same action dot sign in if we go in constant action dot sign in okay we can write in root saga like this as well but we have produced one file and we are accessing that file so we can use this now we have added or constants otherwise this file is going to give you error so that's why i am adding this without editing this saga file okay so if we open our product saga everything is added okay with if we go in here from constant and constants if you go profile saga and i have added import account from constants and routes same in the case of routes as well okay if we go back okay so you can see admin products is added from constant and routes and we are using this admin product inside here okay and again you can add by going in constants and routes and you can add direct path i hope you can understand what i'm trying to say because this is a simple thing so from now onwards we are going to use this file without adding direct path if we go in here every time when we want to give path to our components we are not going to add this and again you can edit this file by adding this routes file inside this app router okay and you can direct use those one inside it if i can add in here import steric as route from routes 
Okay. Now I have accessed this file. Go inside app router and you can use this route file. Okay. And I can add this. That's example. Route. Sorry. We can add inside our packets and route. Why we are adding? Because we are using HTML. Inside HTML, whenever we want to add JavaScript, we are going to add inside the brackets. Route dot home. Okay. And if we go inside routes, then you can see home is equals to this path. You can add each and everything like this. But we have added in the previous video like this. Then I'm not going to edit every, anything from previous videos. So this is the one way of adding that. So I'm going to undo. Okay. Save this file. So now I think you can understand what I'm trying to say. App router routes constant. Save this file. Okay. And don't save. And we can add the loading back inside here. Okay. In reducers, we have integrated all of those reducers inside our root reducer and save this file, close this file. In this video, we are going to actually execute our application, or going to run our application on dev server. But first, we need to add a couple of things inside our application in order to run that. So, we need to add our store inside our application. If we go inside our Redux analogy that we have discussed so far in this project, this is our central repo and this is our reducers, okay, and this is our actions. If you didn't see my analogy, then go and find that Redux analogy in this project and then come back. So we need to add middleware. Middleware is going to access this store and it's going to access all of those reducers all of those departments in our analogy okay so every time when we want to access data from our central repository which is also called state of our application we are going to tell the middleware and the middleware is going to take the state and then this middleware is going to give that data to the reducers so middleware is something which is going to connect this state, this central repository with our reducers. So we are using Saga middleware. And that's why we have added this Saga inside our project. And I'm going to explain each and everything. What is this yield is doing so each and everything inside it. But you need to understand these files means this saga okay and this is a middleware which is going to build a bridge between this central repository also called state and these departments these reducers in order to manipulate those state so we can use redux thunk which is also called a middleware which is which can be used as a middleware inside redux but we are using saga because saga is very good in handling asynchronous functions so that's why we need to add a middleware in our project if we go in here close this file and close this constant sections and we can create a new folder store and inside store add store.js file okay so we need to import a couple of things from our Redux, okay? So first thing is create store, okay? Where all of that is going to be stored. And then apply middle where, okay? Okay, 
So in here from everything is going to be imported from Redux. And then import persist store and persist combine reducers from redux persist and I'm going to explain what does persist means but first import more libraries and then we're going to import storage from redux persist lib storage okay we need the storage and then import create saga middleware from redux saga and then import your reducers root reducer from reducers and the last one import root saga from sagas root saga and I'm sorry this is combined reducer and first take a look on this integration we have included this root reducer like in here okay everything is imported integrated inside root reducer so we are going to access this re uh, root reducer every time instead of giving or going to each reducers one by one okay close and then root saga same in the case of root saga if we go inside sagas and if we go inside root saga okay then you can see product auth and profile sagas is imported inside this root and we are imported it okay and we are using this root saga this product saga profile saga and auth saga is imported and i will give you explanation on that so that it will be easy for you to use these sagas files in the same application that you will be developing in your future but for now you should understand that this is the middleware and it is going to build a bridge with our store and our reducers and go store now you can understand why we have imported this and you can see we are in creating our middleware that's why we are importing and we need our storage so that's why we are importing this so we need to understand what is persist store and persist combined reducers so before going to explain this you need to understand we have installed every libraries inside if we go inside our package.json we have install each and everything if you haven't installed then you can go to first section of this video of this project and the first videos of this project okay then you can find that video in which i've installed each and everything in here okay so what is persist store go to my developed project that that is the reference of our project that we're building if we sign in and if we sign in with google Okay, so if I refresh, then I should be signing inside the, or this application. Okay, and if I close this and go back in here and go back to my local host, and after close and reopen, I should be signing. So this data is stored inside a browser. So we need to understand that we want our application data to be stored inside some local storage of browser, no matter what browser you're using, Chrome, Safari, and everything else. So we need that our data to be stored inside or some local storage in our browser. 
So that's why our persist store comes into play. Okay. So this data is stored inside our application. Unless we remove our history, unless we uninstall our application, okay, then that data will be removed. Otherwise, if we go back and if we go again inside our application, then you should be signed in. So we need to add persist store in our application. We need to add persist gate inside application and we should add what data should be stored inside browser history. And if I remove my browser history, last one hour, clear data. Okay. Okay. And if I refresh this, then you can see I am signed out from this application. Okay, that's why our persist store come into play. Okay, so we should give persist store and we should give persist combined reducer because reducer is dealing with different actions. So don't be confused and don't mix everything and everything is related and it's very easy. Okay, okay, now in here, cause saga middle pair create saga middle pair okay so now we have created an instance saga middle pair and then cause of persist you can give it this name config this is an object so we need to give it key and that key is root okay we need to give storage okay and then we need to give it a list and we can give it the name white list okay so our browser should understand should remember our auth status or role every time when we come back then it should understand and it sh we should give our profile okay we should give it basket and your checkout information and we want to tell it that you should remember the auth of the application what is the auth status whether it is admin or profile uh, sorry the user and the user profile and we need to give the basket every time when we come back we should see our previous basket history what is added what is not added and we should give it our checkout history as well so this thing should be remembered by a browser okay export default and so create constant store create store and we should give it persist combined reducers and inside it auth persist config and root reducer what does this mean this means that these the reducers every reducer is given inside this root reducer okay uh, if you go in here okay inside this root reducer and we have given the list inside it so it should check this list from this root reducers from all of those reducers okay then cost persister and we should give it persist store and we should give the store what kind of data it should store and it should store the data inside our central repository if we go inside here the central repository is here okay then it should store the data from the central repository okay go back store and we should run our middleware okay 
middleware dot run and give it root saga and then return store and persister and that's it okay your store is completed but we can add dev tools in our store as well inside this file okay so we can change the ms capital we haven't used it and let's see if we can use this in the application or not so we have to include the dev tools so go inside browser new tab and type redux dev tools go to redux dev tools the first step is adding extension to chrome and in this page you can click on add to chrome add extension okay you can now see our extension inside our toolbar if you haven't seen directly then you can pin in here so this is the redux dev tool extension okay the next step is to add our redux dev tool package to your application okay go in here and google redux dev tools Okay, this time go to GitHub. Okay, if you scroll down, you can see the users section. Okay, so our focus is going to 1.3 Redux Dev Tool extension package from NPM. So we can copy this, go back to here, create new terminal. Okay, and go to your folder. Okay, you can find this folder in here. Okay, in which your project is situated, and then paste it. Enter. Okay, our Dev Tools has been installed, and now go in here and import compose with dev tools thing okay and import it from redux dev tool extension okay now we need to go to our create store and we should give it the second parameter okay and inside this parameter we can type this compose with dev tools compose with dev tools and pass inside apply middleware this one okay and then Give it saga middleware and that's it we have applied our dev tools okay save this file okay close this file now we need to go in order to run our application we need to add a couple of things inside our index.js because this is the entry point of our application and this index.js is the root of our application. This is not inside uh, any component. This is the root. Okay. Every time when our application wants to open, it will check this index.js. Okay. Our React is included. And we need to include render from React DOM. And app is included. Okay. First, we need to remove all of that, and the service worker will remain same. Okay. Remember, we have included the service worker so far in this project before. So now we need to import 
normalize.css from normalize.css okay and then phone input should be imported react phone input 2 from library and style.css and we have installed it in the previous videos okay what is react phone input is doing if we go in here and view account edit account then you can see this style of the field okay we can select anyone so that's what our react phone input 2 is doing okay so then import web font from web font loader and we have also installed it okay and we need to add firebase okay we have completed our firebase in the previous videos all the functions of our application is written inside that file okay this firebase okay and then import we need to import actions on auth state success and on auth state fail from actions and auth actions okay because every time when we open our application it should check our auth status whether it is user or whether it is admin go inside actions and auth actions and we can check on auth state success and on auth state fail we go in here last but not least configure store from store and store okay then we will use web font dot load what kind of font we want to use okay and that font is font families from Google we are using it okay and we want to use dried sauce okay we can use another one if you want to check the Google families of fonts you can go and you can apply another fonts in here okay now if you remember we are re returning store and persister and you know what is store all of the, or this is our central repository and this is persister in which we are trying to create our local storage go inside index.js and you can create cost and store and persister take it both of them and from configure store okay yeah, like here okay and then const root document and this is the simple one element by id we need id k if we go inside index.html we have included our application id this is the entry point you need to add the id because everything is included inside the body of this html okay we are not adding everything every component inside the body and we are adding inside this div and we should check the id and i can change the id with app okay and save this and go back to index and give it app and one more thing if you go into side our components okay ui and preloader 
okay this is the preloader and you can add this preloader when you start your application that preloader kind of thing will be displayed there like tech coding camp okay i can add this preloader okay we go inside index we need to import that preloader first go in here and import preloader from components and go to UI and preloader is present there okay and then I can use that preloader okay render we can use this render function and we can add this component preloader okay and when we execute our application you will see that what this preloader is doing okay and we should give this root okay this root this is dom element if we not give this root or if we give wrong root then it will give you an error the last thing that we should know here is whenever we open application or auth should be checked and auth should be checked from firebase auth on auth state changed and we'll give it user okay and if user store dot dispatch you can see now we are dispatching our action creators and action creator is on auth state success if status is success okay otherwise in else part store dot dispatch on auth state auth state fail okay and we'll give error message fail to authenticate okay And then we'll render. If not the case, then render app and give it our store. We should give store our central repository. And this is store, this one. Okay. And then give persister and the persister is going to be persister okay i'm using long spelling okay persister okay and then close this component root we should give root every time when we call render then we should give the id and that ID is our app. Okay, fine. Our index.js has been completed. Okay, in here we are checking our user. If user is state is success, then give user. If not, then give it action. After checking if and else part, we are giving and we are rendering our app. This is the component, and we are passing two elements store and persister persist store everything inside our central repository and here everything inside our central repository and go in here and persister go inside store inside store okay is persister and this persister is taking auth profile basket and checkout values go back in here so it will go and it will run this app so we need to edit this app as well
then we will be executing our application in the next video and we will be editing and we will remove some of our bugs in our application so let's have a quick break